Hey everybody, it's Chris Wright from Red Hat, and I've really been looking forward to this conversation uh, with a colleague and a friend of mine that I've known actually for a while, Fran Heron. And he's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Nokia's Core Networks business. So Fran, welcome. Thank you, Chris. Great to see you again. How do you see AI playing a role in the future of networks? I mean, we're, we're modernizing the infrastructure, we're changing that, uh, you know, really trying to become cloud native. Uh, there's, there's edge use cases, there's all this conversation around the, the technical building blocks, of what, it, what is a network. Um, hard to not have, where does AI fit into this picture conversation? Where we are looking at AI right now is on the practical side of things is in probably two areas. One is how we design the network. So a huge amount of the effort we undertake with our customers is in network design, right? They're all that little bit different. Um, they're quite specific. The design, when you bring multiple vendor systems together, needs to be very carefully thought through IP planning, you know, but the network's getting more complex now with all the different locations. So we're looking to see genuinely how we can use um, the AI tooling that's there to help with design, which is a significant part of our of our build effort. I like your notions of uh, network design. Certainly, customer care is, is a huge area of opportunity. Um, uh, I, I see from all the conversations I have in the enterprise, um, a lot of concern around the um, the underlying data used to train models, especially if you're you're leveraging a model as a service. Uh, the meaning, what's the validity of the data? Well, where did that data come from? Because you see something like ChatGPT, you you get these convincingly um, sounding answers that, that could be completely off base or could be per perfectly accurate. Uh, so how do you make sure you're using the right content? Um, what's the data governance behind what goes into the model where you're putting some of your own content in there and you have concerns around the sort of the, the intellectual property or data sovereignty of, of your own data? Uh, and and then how, how do you put it, the model into production in an efficient, you know, well-tuned way that actually gives you good results? Those are those are some pretty big challenges. Um, and so, you know, my expectation is we'll see a set of services that enable understanding, you know, be, being transparent about the data that's used for curation um, and how you infuse that. Say, uh, you know, transform the learning with your own data. Uh, and then produce a model and and deploy a model in a way that doesn't violate some you know regulatory con restrictions or internal concerns. Um, I do see a lot of use cases that are very edge focused. So we get out of the network and we're not doing these beautiful autonomous systems, but we're just talking about edge deployments and uh, the, that all of those same questions surface in these edge environments. Uh, but now the the pro prominent feature of the edge is an inference engine combined with some business logic, and that's uh, an AI-enabled application that's serving either enterprise customers or, or end consumers. Um, that's, 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 it's already happening in, in, to a certain degree when you think about kind of computer vision and uh, the, the things that we're, we're seeing today in edge use cases. Um, that will definitely evolve, and, and I think there's some really interesting areas of opportunity for um, optimizing the network to support the data flows uh, to, to support those those use cases, and then the sort of security and integrity of that stack way out at the edge, um, so that we're providing uh, confidence around the the answers that the inference engine serves to to end users. And then the other area is in customer support. So obviously, there's massive amounts of data telemetry coming off the networks in doing you know predictive monitoring just to see issues that may be happening, and if an issue does happen using it and using the, the wealth of information we have to try and sift through all of that and come up with a clever, correct answer. So customer support, network design, probably the two obvious starting points. And then the question we're asking ourselves, and maybe you can help us answer, is how do we, how do we use the available technology, right? Is this going to be something we build on-prem, you know, in our data centers and load up the tooling and we have a private, you know, set of tools to do it? or is it going to be mainly a cloud play where we put our information into a provider's, you know, AI offering and we get the answers back? And I think a lot of companies are still thinking through that, right? You're seeing different solutions coming, but so that's kind of the pragmatic use cases. And then there's how do we leverage the existing technology to actually make that happen? 
I'm a big fan of the closed loop automation. Um, and my, my long-term vision is where we can infuse op, op, operational intelligence into the platform itself uh, so that we can help our, uh, our operators uh, really operate these complex systems with ease. Uh, and you know, whether that's an autonomous system or whether that's uh, sort of a machine augmented human operated system, you know, clearly the latter is where we'd start and we'll just keep trying to approach that, that holy grail of perfection. Um, so that, that's kind of the vision, the dream that I see, um, where we can bring it in in practical areas, which I, I love being really focused and practical. No, and I think as long as we make sure we, we maintain the boundaries between what's reporting versus machine learning versus AI and don't call everything AI, I think that's going to be important. So <laughs> sifting through the, the nonsense. But maybe a good idea is next time we chat, Chris, we get back together and see what we've actually done in this space. You know, right now we're I all planning it. I think it'll be good then to come back and check in and see what's actually happened. Yeah, a little hype reality check. It's a Indeed. great idea. Indeed. Well, thank you so much, Fran. What, a, what an enjoyable conversation. I appreciate your time. No, it's a pleasure, Chris. Great to see you again and looking forward to catching up face-to-face -face at some point soon.